everything inside me. A recent article railing against cancel culture by Matthew Hennessy, link on the description box below, is a reasonably decent piece about how the vicious virtue signaling of woke leftists destroys the country and culture itself. In Hennessy's article, he argues that Generation X is the only thing that can stop it. He offers a rallying cry to other members of his generation to stand up against the army of the offended to save free speech and expression. Hennessy writes. We grew up in a country that didn't ban books. We all agreed that witch hunts and blacklists were bad. Censorship was an outrage. The 1980s were not that long ago. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. So, obviously we've got a problem here. Everybody can see it. Everybody knows where it's heading. What we don't have, yet, is a group of people who are willing to do something about it. I nominate us. The generation that fought for its right to party should be leading the charge against these millennial Maoists, terrorizing the culture via social media. Why aren't we? Fair enough. But, millennials did not invent cancel culture. Hennessy's article is worth a read, particularly if you're a member of Generation X. However, he, unfortunately, misses the point of what's happening and who is responsible. Laying the blame for cancel culture at the feet of millennials is incredibly short-sighted. The millennial generation inherited an America offering service jobs instead of high-wage skilled employment, a higher education system staffed with radical Marxist activists, and an entertainment industry designed to promote the destruction of traditional American culture. It wasn't millennials who allowed government programs to destroy the traditional family structure and promote separation, or allowed the government to shred the constitution and initiate unprovoked foreign wars. Most of that was accomplished before millennials were old enough to read, let alone vote. As a result, most millennials are too busy working three jobs to survive, while being blamed for every ill of society before or after their birth. Millennials didn't invent cancel culture. Christian conservatives were proud purveyors of cancelling what they deemed inappropriate for decades. Only now, when Christian conservatives are among those being cancelled, do they oppose it. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Hennessy tries to lay it out when he writes. I'm not saying that the 1980s were some kind of paradise. Tipper Gore launched a censorious crusade against popular music. On the list of filthy songs compiled by her parents' music resource center was We're Not Gonna Take It by Twisted Sister and She Bop by Cyndi Lauper. Believe me when I tell you that every teenager in America was horrified. All the cool kids protested and jeered, not a Twisted Sister and Cyndi Lauper, as they might do today, if the woke mob called for it, but at Mrs. Al Gore, who was obviously sticking her nose where it didn't belong. What's more, the artists who were targeted by the PMRC fought back, and just about everybody agreed they were right to do so. D. Snyder didn't apologize for having given offense, and slink away like a pathetic spineless slug. He waltzed into a Capitol Hill conference room, looked him straight in the eye, and, in not so many words, told them to back the f*** up. He's right. But what he fails to mention is that just about everybody agrees the same today. Like in the 80s, it is a dominant loud minority that clamors for cancelling and erasing anything they disagree with. The difference is that today, that dominant minority is winning. He's right to point out that it's the young people, the generation that typically wants edgy, entertaining, and racy things to be drawn to the forefront, that is now racing everyone, including each other, into the gulags. Let's not dwell on which age group is more effective, or which rock stars are better spokesmen. Hennessy should remember, D. Snyder, who rightly made Tipper Gore look like a fool, has become a facilitator of that culture unwittingly, 
by lending credence to the claims that anyone who questions the narrative is a denier and supports Trump as an idiot. To be fair, he isn't firing the gun to have anyone cancelled, but he hands the shooters ammunition. Keep in mind, Snyder did personally cancel Trump when he publicly declared Trump's policies and statements so horrible that the two could no longer be friends. If only D found things like the bombing of Syria or the deindustrialization of his own country as abhorrent. Snyder was a rebel when depravity needed revolutionaries to push the bounds of morality to the brink. Now, when the insurgents are those questioning mass hysteria or neoliberal trade policies, he can sit back and relax in complete virtue, his signal beaming to the rest of the world. American culture has been manipulated and transformed since the late 1800s and into the Roaring Twenties. That manipulation began full swing in the 1960s and every generation since. A growing indoctrination in the schools and entertainment industry has brought Americans from a culture where free speech and expression were paramount to one where words are literal violence. And such was the strategy of Marxist activists all along. Marxism, after all, is not the subtle implementation of political platform points, but the destruction of all culture, structure, and systems that exist in a target nation. The economic system by which it operates must be destroyed. The family unit must be destroyed. Civility and tolerance must be destroyed. Critical thinking must be destroyed. The result is, cultural anarchy and an authoritarian dictatorship. J. K. Rowling and Margaret Atwood, creators of Harry Potter and The Handmaid's Tale, respectively, are trying to cancel cancel culture. They are among 150 signators in an open letter published in Harper's Magazine. Generation X can indeed cancel cancel culture, but not by simply saying they disagree with it. They have first to understand that they are not dealing with a bunch of whiny 20-something brats who want everything their way. After all, who raised that generation? They might start asking themselves how masses of children came to see the world so much differently from their parents. Did masses of parents make a mistake at the same time? Or were there forces at play that influenced the younger generations to pursue a different course? The truth is that these institutions, colleges, universities, public schools, the television and music industries, social media, have indeed all conspired to manipulate entire generations into the next phase of indoctrination. The generation currently allowing all things to be cancelled will be assuming power in a few years. It is a generation that has been trained to see all interactions as a power struggle and all functions of society fundamentally based on power. Nobody is safe from being cancelled. If Generation X wants to stop cancel culture, it needs to discover what is driving it. To do that, Generation X needs to stop listening to D. Snyder, and it needs to start reading Karl Marx. Many of us abhor the cancel culture we see occurring all around us. How do we stop it? Or do you think it has gone too far to be stopped? Share your thoughts in the comments. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.